Glasgow here. And so this video is on the experiment on conservation of energy. And so the goal for this experiment is to take our smart card. Uh, here I have one in blue. And we're going to drop it, or drop it, we're going to release it from various initial heights. And then we're going to measure uh, the velocity at a certain reference point, which is going to be close to the bottom, but not quite there. And see, and hopefully we'll see some kind of correlation between the initial height that we release the cart and the velocity of it at the reference point. Um, so for uh, the reference point, we're not going to, uh, well, and because as you've seen before, like it takes some time for me to stop and it kind of gets curvy or whatever. Um, so I'm going to actually have the reference point a little bit higher. Um, and so my reference point, I'm going to use, I don't know if you can see uh, here on the track, uh, there's like a yellow strip with numbers. Um, and so that's actually centimeters. It's starting from zero here at the bottom or at the at this end. I'm not going to try to say left or right. At this end, it starts at zero. And at this end over here, it starts at, it ends at 120. So it's 120 uh, centimeters long. Um, but instead, of, as I was saying, instead of using the end, I'm going to use a reference point of 20 where it's marked 20 right here. And I'm going to use this meter stick to, to measure the actual height of what it is at 20. And so I'm going to measure the height of the track right where it's marked 20. And I see that it's 6 point, 6.3 okay. 6 centimeters. That's our um, height of the reference point, 6.3 centimeters. Okay, the other thing that we've got to measure here is the mass of this because potential energy uh, depends on mass. So let me pull up my scale. All right, I got zero grams. Uh, let's put our card on there and we get 270 grams. So our cart has a mass of 270 grams. All right, so I've done that. All right, put that card over there for now. Let's see, we've got the height of our reference point. Um, and then how do you know the actual height? So instead of actually coming down here, I guess I could do this, but, uh, and then you can actually measure the height of here at 30, here at 40, here at 50. Um, I could do that, but it's much more fun to have you guys do trig, right? Yeah. So instead I'm using my phone um, and I can actually uh, uh, measure uh, hopefully this will work. I can actually measure the angle of the phone when it's at zero degrees or as it tilts, um, as it's laying down. Um, so I'm going to put it here on our track and uh, start measuring it. And let's see, we are getting an angle of 10.33, right? So uh, the whole track, that means the whole track has an angle of 10.33 from over here. And so if you know the length of the hypotenuse and you know the angle, then you should be able to figure out what is this opposite, right? The height. So turn that off. Okay. Uh, stop. Okay. So done with that. We got our angle. We got our reference height. Um, we got our mass. And I think we're ready to go. Right. Uh, one thing that's important is um, being able to, to say, okay, well, this is a 20 marked on my track, uh, but what exactly is that on um, the computer, on the Pascal, right? Um, so what we're going to do is, let's see, I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to use, if it's just hanging there, it's, it's initial position, I'm going to call that a zero, so this run one, and so I want to see what's the actual position of 20. So I want it to be where, right where the magnet is at the end of 20. And hopefully that's reading at, uh, I guess it's a point two. So you see a point two. So we're seeing a straight line right there, and where that straight line position, that constant position is, that's going to be our reference point. All right, so we can stop there. All right, so um, now we have to do some initial heights. Um, so I'm going to start, uh, we want to do at least five initial heights. Uh, of course, you don't want to start at 20 and then have it fall zero centimeters. Um, so our first one will be 30. Um, let me get that lined up right there. And my goal is to, to stop it before it hits the rubber band. 
before it's to stop. All right, so here we go. Uh, I've got it lined up right at 30. Okay, press start. And there we go. Okay, that was so small you probably can't uh, uh, see what happened. Um, but hopefully you'll be able to find out where it has a position of 20. Oh, you have to start doing that right from the actual tone. Okay. Okay. Sorry. You gotta actually start the run at zero or at that same zero. Alright. Okay, and then I'm gonna pull it up to 30. Okay, there we go. Yeah. And then I'm gonna release it up. So you can see, oh, very small, you can see where uh, it starts returning back to the origin again. And then as it's returning back to the origin, find where it crosses uh, the 20 point, right? And that's going to be our reference point, right? So that was with an initial, sorry, I should have said clearly, initial height of 30, which you have to convert that into an actual height. All right, so I'm going to start. Okay, that was run two. Um, next one will be run three. Okay, so here we go. For run three, I'm going to get start. Uh, I'm going to start I'm in my initial position. I'm going to pull it all the way up to 40. Line it up at 40, hold it there. Okay, now it's stable at 40. This again is run three. And release, stop. Okay. And of course, they had to up there. All right, so again, you should be able to find uh, right where it hit uh, 20. Okay, uh, let's see, from 40, okay, so that's run three. It's a little bit confusing that 40 is run three. Okay, whatever it is, what it is. Okay, so the next one uh, we'll have uh, 50. five runs actually look nice and you can use them um, but if one doesn't work out then you can use another one all right so let's start again okay this is run six run six i'm going to 70. okay further run six i'm going to 70. got my hand ready to stop it and there you go i i hit it off but oh. all right but thankfully i hit it after it, it already passed the reference point. So that's why, again, that's why the reference point is not the very end, but it's a little bit further than that. All right, that's run six. All right, here's run seven. Uh, that was 70, here we go, 80. So this is the highest, actually I could do a 90. Maybe I'll do 90, okay. Okay, but this one is 80. This is what, run seven. Run seven, starting at 80 and... for 90. Okay, and then we got run 8 starting from 90. 90, get my hand ready over here. 90 and go. All right, here we go. All right, so uh, I got a whole bunch of runs for you there. 
hopefully something look you can even see where its starting point is awesome this looks pretty cool um, so of course what stands out in the velocity graph right now is like where I'm stopping it because that's crazy so just ignore that stopping part and you again you want to look for the velocity at the reference point oh that's a beautiful graph All right good luck with analysis I'll see you guys in the next video